Hello and welcome to Digital Spies Who Review, our nerdy guide to Doctor Who's 50th anniversary special, where Digital Spies TV editor Morgan Jeffrey and myself, Alex Fletcher, gorge ourselves silly on the geek again that was the day of the Doctor. First things first, Morgan, uh, what were your first impressions of the day of the Doctor when you walked out? I know you were at a cinema screening. Mm -hmm. When you walked out that screening, what was going through your mind? Were you in a a nerdy explosion of glee <laughs> at that moment in time? Uh, I, I kind of actually had um, mixed feelings. Obviously there was a lot of anticipation building up to this. And I, I felt like um, the day of the Doctor, um, superficially it was kind of really entertaining. Um, you know, it was kind of, it was funny and, and it was emotional and it looked incredible, possibly the best Doctor Who has ever looked. And then I thought it was um, a great celebration of, of new Doctor Who, sort of, you know, post 2005 Doctor Who. You've got David Tennant there and he's kind of brilliantly sort of perfectly recreating his Doctor and there's so many nods and little little sort of in-jokes um, from the modern era of the show. But then as a celebration of 50 years of Doctor Who, I don't know if it kind of quite lived up to expectations for me. It didn't feel like it was uh, as rooted in everything from 1963 onwards as it could have been. And that little bit at the end where they, all the Doctors came together, that for me felt a little bit too brief. Would you agree with that? I agree. It, it was a little brief and then it was immediately trumped also by Peter Capaldi's little cameo that comes in. I mean, yeah, there were plenty of little nods to the past. You had, uh, you know, the junkyard on Totter's Lane, mm -hmm. the references to, you know, the, the three Doctors and everything. But because it was, uh, the storyline was all centred around the Time War, and that's a very kind of, you know, new Doctor Who idea, it felt like it was kind of um, summing up and celebrating the mythology of new Doctor Who, but it wasn't really rooted in the mythology of all of Doctor Who. Tom Baker at the mm. end, that was a big surprise, mm. although Tom Baker did obviously reveal the week before that he was going to be in it. Yeah. That's it, Baker. <laughs> uh, what did you make of that, that final appearance? Do you think that was a nice touch and did you think it worked? And, and who on earth was the curator? Well, have you figured it out yet? Yeah, well, I, I, I thought it was great to have Tom Baker in there. Obviously, you know, it maybe would have been difficult to have all of the old Doctors back in there. So if you're going to get just one, you may as well have the guy who was the longest serving Doctor. And I mean, David Tennant is maybe the only person who could give him a run for his money in terms of being the most iconic Doctor as well. When people think of Doctor Who, they still now think of the long scarf and, and you know, and they think of Tom Baker. So mm. I thought it was great to have him in there. As for who he was playing, I mean, there's kind of hints that he might be uh, a future Doctor, not the fourth Doctor, but, uh, you know, a, a Doctor from some point in the future who's gone back and just kind of adopted that face again. So, you know, you had that little glimpse of, of Peter Capaldi, but you also had maybe another hint of what's coming up in the future of Doctor Who. The whole plan and what Stephen Moffat appeared to want to do with the 50th episode was set it up for the future, mm. come up with a sort of big overarching, you know, story for the next 50 years of Doctor Who. Mm. How did this episode sort of change the mythology of Who exactly? Well, obviously, the, there was uh, a couple of big things. There's the, uh, the return of Gallifrey, which was believed to be destroyed and has now been kind of resurrected. And I think the idea is in the next series, it won't, and, and going on, it won't be the case that every week the Doctor is, you know, on the hunt for Gallifrey and then just accidentally ends up on Mars or something. I think it's just, you know, the idea that he has uh, a, a dream that one day he will get back to Gallifrey. It's more just kind of uh, a driving force. And obviously for the past 50 years he's been almost on the run from Gallifrey and on the run from the Time Lords. And now he's uh, searching for them. So it kind of, he's still in exile, but it's kind of flipped things on its head a little bit. And also, obviously, the other key thing is where does John Hurt fit in mm. to the long list of That's uh, two, yeah. long list of uh, doctors yeah. now? Um, we had the little tea. We now know where McGann, how he transformed into John Hurt. We mm. found out that before the 50th anniversary. Where, where do you stand on? You know, is Hurt a, a proper doctor? Does he count as nine? Is Eccleston pushed up a number? I suppose technically he is the ninth Doctor, as you say. McGann regenerates into him. That's fairly, you know, undeniable evidence. But on the other hand. You know, he's been called the War Doctor. I think Stephen Moffat has called him Doctor 8.5. They're giving themselves a lot of outs, I think, um, as, as to not to have to, you know, uh, reclassify everyone, you know. So I think fans, and, and well, I know for myself, I'm still going to call Eccleston the Ninth Doctor. I'm still going to call David Tennant the Tenth Doctor because I don't want to have to go through all my Doctor Who reference books with a red pen, you know, crossing everything out and, and re recorrecting. There's no point in that. 
Um, did you have any quibbles with the episode? Any things you didn't like or didn't enjoy in particular? I was a bit disappointed that there was no Eccleston. Mm. I think a lot of people expected him, especially when John Hurt started to regenerate. Yeah. I think a lot of people were like, oh, that's nice. Chris Eccleston's not going to appear, and then it cut. <laughs> yeah. Just at a crucial moment. Um, were you disappointed by that? Well, there was, there was like a little hint of Eccleston in that scene. If you kind of look, look closely, mm. you can see they kind of, like, I think they used CGI or something to kind of have, you know, his image there just yeah. as John Hurt was regenerating. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, it couldn't be helped. If Christopher Eccleston didn't want to be in it, he didn't want to be in it. But the only problem with that was, you know, John Hurt is, is an acting legend, and I think we both agree he was mm. fantastic in the episode, but he felt like a bit of a stand-in for Christopher Eccleston, for me. You know, he was the Time War Doctor. He was that battle-scarred, haunted Doctor, and that's very much the role that Christopher Eccleston played. Uh, you know, back in the show. And I, I feel like, you know, maybe an initial draft of The Day of the Doctor was written for Christopher Eccleston. They claim it wasn't, but it really did feel like John Hurt was uh, a, a bit of a stand-in for Eccleston. A brilliant stand-in, but kind of a stand-in nonetheless. I have had a huge response uh, to the episode on Digital Spy. 465 uh, comments so far. Um, all incredibly mixed, as you would expect from Digital Spy. Kaza B. Uh, says that was the best Doctor Who episode ever. It's a strong words. Perhaps getting slightly carried away, but... Um, <laughs> Anniversary he, buzz. Someone called I Know Best says it was an overdose of smugness. Smug? I think, you know, if there's one time you're allowed to be smug, it's on your, you know, your 50th anniversary. I think, I think most people are a little bit smug on their birthday because everyone's telling them how great they are, and that's, yeah, I think that's okay. You can exactly. be a little bit smug. Doctor Who doesn't do that very often, to be fair to the show, and that's why it's lasted. But I think for the 50th episode, you're allowed to be self-indulgent. I mean, most of the time they avoid self-indulgence because they always want to bring in new viewers and they don't want to just appeal to, you know, the hardcore fans. And the, the one time, as you say, you're allowed to be a little bit self-indulgent and, and, you know, nod your head to, you know, moments and scenes and, and icons from the past is the big 50th anniversary special. And then finally, I know he's your favourite commenter on our site, yep. James, James Green, ah, my best uh, your nemesis <laughs> on Big Girl Spy. He, he was actually in agreement with you. He actually enjoyed this episode for once. Wow. And for once, Morgan and James Green are on the same team sheet. Uh, he said, I felt speechless. Uh, everything I wanted from the 50th was here. It must have been, you know, a good episode of Doctor Who to please at least half of the fans, I think. You know, Doctor Who fans are notoriously critical, so if you've pleased over 50%, you've done well. You've done well, Stephen Moffat, well done. So finally, last thing to touch on, I guess, is Peter Capaldi. We, mm -hmm. He did pop up yep. in the end. We saw Capaldi's eyes. Capaldi's eyes. So what, are you excited about uh, him turning up in the Christmas special now, and what do you think we can expect from the, from the Christmas episode? Uh, yeah, I'm very excited about Peter Capaldi. He's, as we said before, he's a great actor, and it's always exciting when a new Doctor pops up. That's probably the most exciting moment in, in Doctor Who history is when a new Doctor comes along each time. Um, but I'm also kind of, you know, sad to be saying goodbye to Matt Smith. He's actually one of my all-time favourite Doctors, and I'm interested to see. There's, there's been a lot of stuff left hanging, little threads um, left hanging in, in the Stephen Moffat kind of era. And so I'm, I'm really intrigued and hopeful that a lot of those uh, story threads will be wrapped up in this Christmas special. And it's also, it'll be nice, because Christmas episodes can be a bit knock-around, a bit silly. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, my favourite Christmas special so far has been uh, The Christmas Invasion, which was David Tennant's first episode, because, he, you know, there was a new Doctor, there was regeneration trauma, there was... It had some substance to it, whereas, as you say, when the, there's nothing like that in there, the Christmas specials can get a bit, a bit throwaway, a bit silly, and it's just chasing robot snowmen around with the sonic screwdriver. Uh, whereas this, you know, it's Matt Smith's final episode, there's a lot to wrap up, and it'll still have all those, you know, kind of Christmassy elements in there, but it'll also hopefully have some real substance and not just be, you know, a little bit of fluff. Well, that's obviously all we've got time for here uh, on The Who Review, uh, but please feel free to leave your thoughts uh, reviews, critiques and rants about the Day of the Doctor at the bottom of the page. Um, but until next time, see you later.